Hey guys, back again with another one. Uh, today we're going to be trying something a little bit different. Um, I have several videos planned over the next few weeks um, to try to expand the scope of the channel a little bit, get into uh, a couple different areas pertaining to music. Um, I'm still going to do the listographies on a regular basis, so um, there'll be a lot more of those on the way. I do want to uh, try to talk a little bit about new music, which I haven't done much on the channel. Um, I listen to a lot of new music, uh, and I thought it'd be good to, you know, just get a little discussion going about uh, what everyone's been listening to. Um, so my idea right now is to do one of these at the end of each month, um, and just make a few recommendations on the things I like the most uh, f from that month. I'm not going to do full reviews or get too in-depth with anything, just sort of uh, shoot out a couple records that I've been into. Uh, recently. So January is typically a pretty slow month as far as new releases go. Um, really from uh, November through February is a pretty slow time of year um, for new music. Um, I've listened to 13 records from this year so far, um, which is a pretty decent start to the year. Um, and looking at those 13, I would say probably eight of them uh, were better than my number 100 record from last year. So so probably eight of these records would have made my best records of 2018 list. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good rate, off to a good start. So I really just want to talk about five of those eight records. Those are the records that I think are the, are the strongest and really worth um, you know, the recommendation. Again, I'm not doing full long reviews on any of these records. Um, just quick uh, recommendations, just the fact that I'm mentioning them. Um, means that they have my stamp of approval. Uh, highly recommend all of these records. Uh, also, these are in no particular order. All right, getting started uh, with Deer Hunter. The album is called Why Hasn't Everything Already Disappeared? Uh, so this record continues down the path of their previous record, uh, Fading Frontier, with more melodic songwriting, cleaner, more hi-fi production. However, um, for being sort of the poppiest era of their career, uh, there's plenty of dark themes and weird th things going on on this record, um, sort of songs that fight against the overall accessibility of the record. My favorite tracks would be Element, What Happens to People, and Planes. Alright, moving on, I uh, want to talk quickly about James Blake's new album, Assume Form. This is by far his uh, most listenable, listenable, most complete and accessible record that he's released to date. Um, he achieves this by playing mostly to his strengths, um, sort of sort of stays out of the production um, trickery that he's sort of been plagued by in the past and really focuses on uh, the songwriting and you know, more somber ballads. Um, there's still great production on this record and it's clearly um, has his uh, production stamp all over it, but uh, I think it's a bit more tasteful. Uh, my favorite songs here are Tell Them, Are You In Love, I'll Come To, and Power On. Also want to talk quickly about the Better Oblivion Community Center. Um, this is a collaborative album between Connor Oberst and Phoebe Bridgers. Um, full length record. Uh, for the most part it's what it, you would kind of expect from this pairing, uh, which is to say an album full of really strong songwriting. Uh, Dylan Thomas and Chesapeake, I think, are, are the obvious standouts, but the deep cuts are often equally effective. And next, uh, Pedro the Lion, with the new album Phoenix. This is his first record in 15 years. Um, Pedro the Lion is not a group that I ever really listened to. I was sort of aware of them, but, but never got much into them, probably because of their um, sort of connection to, you know, religious music or Christian music. I never really gave it much of a chance, uh, but I was really impressed with this record. Um, the lyrics really draw you in by painting vivid pictures of childhood and growing up, uh, but it's also the, mel the melodies on this record that really make it such an uplifting record, really good rock record. Um, Yellow Bike, Circle K, Quietest Friend, and My Phoenix are my favorite tracks. And lastly, uh, the new Sharon Van Etten record, Remind Me Tomorrow. This record feels like uh, a definitive artistic statement. 
it's not a total reinvention, but it drastically uh, expands on her established sound. Her songwriting is similar to what it's been on past records, but the arrangements are far more elaborate. There's a lot more keys and synths and um, more experimental drum sounds, just an overall more fleshed out sound. Um, the extra variety really helps uh, keep the listener engaged throughout the entire record, where on past records, uh, certain songs would stand out, and uh, most of her tracks are, are strong on their own, but um, strung together throughout the course of an LP. Um, it could start to feel a little heavy, a little like overly emotional, and uh, could wear on you a bit. But here, uh, the record flows really well, and uh, the songs are really, really powerful. And probably my favorite of these five records, but we'll see if that... Uh, if that stands up throughout the year. But anyways, thanks for watching. Um, comment below on what you've been listening to this past month. Um, give me some recommendations. And of course, like the video, um, subscribe if you haven't. Um, like I said, some more different types of videos coming up soon. I'm working on a series of videos um, where I talk about my favorite guitar players and uh, still some more listographies coming up. Uh, I have several in mind, but let me know also what you would like to see. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.